Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update. And as you can see by where I'm standing, I've made some uh, significant advances in uh, in astro science. We've got these telescopes in place. In fact, let's turn off alt mode. You can see we've got these got these telescopes in place. Now these aren't running yet, even though we've got the inputs here of all of the of the uh, the, fr the frames they're going to need because we haven't got the coolant in place yet. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's talk about this in the sort of, in the order that I've actually been doing things. So let's zoom out to map view and look back over here. So hopefully from last week you'll remember that I was setting I was setting up this big recycling area over here. So we've got this this junk belt that runs all the way along the the factory and it's just picking up well at the moment it's picking up scrap but also it'll pick up a, it'll be allowed to pick up various other things as we go forwards. So the idea behind this belt is that we want to be able to just chuck anything we want to get rid of onto here. It'll be swept away and then dealt with by the systems down here. So, having a look at this, what have we got? Well, as, as you saw, we've got, we, firstly we're splitting off the, uh, the the junk data cards that can be reformatted over here. And I've now got the thermofluid being brought up. And as usual, we've got a pump here that's keeping this tank at 10,000. And so that means we can then cool it down here and just run it round and round in circles here to, to keep the uh, to keep this machine cool while it's do, while it's formatting the cards down. So keeping keeping that nice and clean. Um, this system here is designed with the intention at some point of putting in some additional um, hypercoolers along the top here to cool the, um, the the thermofluid down a bit further for when we upgrade to the later tiers of formatting card formatting recipes. I may even bring in cryonite later for the top tier formatting recipe, but I'm not sure if we'll bother with that one because that's a bit more a bit more advanced, a bit more complicated, and I'm kind of lazy. We can also deal with the then the junk data cards that come out of here by crushing them down into scrap, and the scrap all then flows into here and is processed. As, as I was talking about last time, so we're, we're then cooking it into metals, putting the metals into the stations down here. You've seen all that before. I'm not going to go over that again. <coughs> we do also have a st station down here that's collecting up the uh, the actual good memory cards. That I will talk about again in a moment. Um, but the idea is just generally yes. Yeah, so as we flow down, we've then got the area that deals with all of the contaminated sludges and fluids and things and tidies all of that up. And now, this is where we get to the area where new things have started to happen and where it actually gets exciting. So before, last time, I did have some of this system in place and we had this rocket landing pad and we just had a rocket land here that, that shouldn't have come here, it should have gone to the other side, so we were tidying that up. But what I've now done has gone, actually we don't want to bring this stuff up by rocket, most of this stuff up by rocket. We're going to do it by delivery cannon instead because that's that's a lot easier. Because this, as you might remember, we were spent, I, I spent quite a lot of time in the last video thinking about how on earth I was going to get all of the different substances off the belt and into a processing facility over here. So the original plan was to put in another rocket launching pad over here and then feed it from all of the uh, from from the bus over here. But there were going to be quite a lot of more complicated things required, like um, ingots and ice and stuff like that, things that aren't on the bus already. And so we do have this station up here, which is unloading bulk goods which come in on these trains. So as you can see, we've got the various ingots and we've got a couple of the module types as well. And so Tristan was apparently putting in a splitter in here to, to allow us to cut off from here and go off to an another rocket. Um, he says he, 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 was, he was doing that and then um, I decided I didn't want to use it, sad face. Um, so maybe he's... I, I'm, I'm guessing he's then just tidied up and removed what he'd put in. So... Um, Sorry about that, but yeah, I decided against that in the end because most of the things that were required were already either on or very, very close to the delivery cannon network. So if we have another look back up in Norvis orbit, we can see that the things we want over here, we've got the barrels of lube, barrels of petroleum gas, barrels of heavy oil, sulfur, ice, copper, and an iron, and a couple of other things which we'll talk about in a moment. And all of these, relatively small quantities, and all of these are sort of either already on the uh, delivery cannon network or very, very close to it. So if we go back over to Norvis again, we can look at the delivery cannons, yes, just here. So we've got here, we've got the system where we're shipping out all the ingredients required to make the meteor defense ammunition, which is um, wood for the uh, circuits, ice for water for the sulfuric acid, sulfur for the sulfuric acid, steel for the batteries I think maybe or maybe the ammunition but anyway these are all the ingredients you need in order to make meteor defense ammo so we've got this array of guns ready to ship all that stuff out and you'll notice this is very very similar to what I need up there in Norbit for the recycling so we put in another area here for Norbit recycle where we can ship out the ice the um, the sulfur no not sulfur the, the the iron and the copper so all of those can be shipped from here so that's been set up reasonably easily we've got the um, we've got this one set up to receive the signal from Norbit recycling it's passed out to all these all, all the uh, loaders for these cannons and so we can ship out water copper uh, iron and then you go it is just fired up there nice and easy oh and sulfur as well nice and easy it's all shot up there get we get all the ingredients we need 
Now there's a bit of a problem with the uh, the water ice going on at the moment. It, I had a quick look into this. It turns out that it's um, for some reason these these two um, belts here are still programmed to work on sulfur rather than ice. So if I copy this to these two, then they'll start flowing again. This is the system that's designed to keep the keep everything balanced across between the warehouses, so it un unloads evenly. Um, but if it's not programmed properly, then you tend to get some issues. So there's a little bit of imbalance here, but it's probably going to be close enough. And now that we've got it flowing again, maybe it'll keep things a little bit more organised. And now we have that flow of ice coming out here, and eventually up to here like this and so this will reload this delivery cannon uh, we can start shooting it out to ice out to Agnea and out to Norbit Norbit orbit again so this this will fix this will fix the problem we'll have that we'll have that water ice up there slightly harder was the um, was the uh, the oil based things but oh, but it turned out over here this is big oil we already had a system of delivery cannons set up and that was for shipping out um, heavy oil barrels to anywhere where you need to kick start a system on another planet in order to get coal liquefaction running so um, over here we originally had this setup bringing in the barrels by uh, logistics robots so they'd be dropped into a into a chest here and put into into the um, in, into this uh, assembly machine to make the barrels and load it into here and that was kind of okay back then because we'd only uh, we'd only be sending these out occasionally it'd be one for each extra outpost we established so it was really really cheap there weren't very many of them required it was it was okay but now that this is part of the actual uh, proper logistics system for keeping keeping planets up and running I wanted to have a proper supply of barrels running here that wasn't wasn't reliant on logistics bots so I've put in a steel drop-off station down here it more or less fits the pattern but I've left a bit of a gap in the middle here because I'd already started building the uh, delivery cannon systems at that point and then a couple of assembly machines over here to make the barrels these fit in with the pattern that um, Mark has established with all of the oil processing machines along here in that there's they're lined up with these machines they're in about the same sort of place but we don't need more than two of them because we don't need that many barrels so along here, we've got heavy barrel, heavy barrel, heavy barrels. We've got heavy oil being put into barrels here. That's coming straight out of these tanks, which are conveniently close. Uh, that loads up this gun and shoots it off to uh, again. This is for the the Norvis orbit one, uh, the recycling area. I've done the same thing. Ooh, there we go. There's some uh, petroleum gas being made, and as you can see, we've got this 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 belt. This this pipe then goes all the way up to here, uh, not all that far, conveniently, where we've got, an, we've got a good supply of petroleum gas that's being loaded into the into, for trains up here. Uh, then we've got then we needed the lube as well. That was slightly harder. I needed a slightly longer belt. Uh, I mean, not belt, a uh, pipe for that because it had to come all the way up to here because this is the nearest place that we had lube available. But then um, I was able to run that down from here down 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 here in, in, into a, into a loader, and then we're able to ship that off into orbit. So back up to the orbit again. Is that has that covered all of those ingredients? I think it has. So that's the, yes, that's those three coming from the barrel area, and those four coming from the uh, the other delivery cannon area that I was talking about. And so that means we've now got all of the stuff we need to keep the um, keep the liquids running here. So you see, we've got nice full pipes of all of the oily things here, and of uh, and of water as well. And so that means that now the uh, the machines here that are making the cosmic water can actually start flowing. These are a bit behind and are playing catch up because, as you saw, we had we'd run out of water, and I've just fixed that by sorting the ice flow out. Um, so that's why these are a bit low. But now they're starting to they should be starting to fill up again, um, and the cosmic water can now be put into these tanks. But a lot of it is going to be flowing down into here, where we're making turning it into the uh, the orange goo, the chemical gel. So now that's flowing a bit better. That can flow down into the tanks here. So we've got a train st a station ready to take that away if required. But also we're letting it flow down a bit further into here. And this is where the iron and the sulphur and the copper are required in order to make thermofluid, which, we, which we're uh, now trying to stockpile in large quantities. So far we've got 22,000 of it, but we're trying to build up a decent quantity of this. And eventually we'll get to the point where we can start providing this to places by train. Um, <clears throat> Now, you might remember from the previous episode that we're also pulling in iron and copper are being generated by the uh, machines up here that are smelting it down from the scrap. And that's also being passed down here as a priority, down into down down these belts. And, and so instead of being fed all the way down here and in over here, I decided it would be easier to put it straight into the, um, into the storage system over here. So we're loading it into this landing pad and then into this warehouse. And I've got this hooked up over here, so we're watching to see when there's more than 300 um, iron iron plates in here. Then we'll stop we'll stop passing it over because we don't need more than 300 plus the uh, the, the minus 200 got there. So if we have 500, we're probably okay. We can let that back up and start loading up the stations, but that hasn't really happened yet. But it will eventually. So the idea of this is that we'll use up the iron and copper that's being produced by the scrap processing first, but if there's not enough of it, then we can bring more up from Norvis by delivery cannon. So we're using up the stuff that's already here, doesn't need to be transported first, and then we'll use up any, and then if, if we need any more, we can bring that in separately. The 
possible risk hit factor here would be that if we weren't using it up fast enough for this system, then we'd end up with a backlog of it and cause it to clog up. But because I'm feeding it into these stations and then we'll take it away from these stations as well, we should be able to find other places that will use it up. So I think that should be all right. So that means down here, yes, we've got the thermofluid, and that's the thermofluid that's then been passed up this very, very long pipe here, all the way up to here to allow us to reformat the cards. Now, my original plan was that we'd have a train bringing it up to here, unloading it for the energy science, and then we'd pass a bit of that across to here and, um, and have that done. But I thought, for now, actually, I think it's probably easier to just run this long pipe up here. I could also now run run another feed off this pipe into the into the uh, energy science and save one of the trains. We may well do that. It's a little bit spaghetti and a little bit uh, slightly weird design, um, but I think it would work quite nicely, and it'd probably be easier than putting in an, an additional train. So we'll stick. We may well stick with that for now. However, I think it's likely to be Tristan who sets up the energy science. So we'll um, we'll see what he wants to do about that. So yes, that's making my that's making my thermofluid as as you can see. I've also got in a disposal system for the barrels, so we had a lot of barrels being generated, but not being, not weren't doing anything with them. So we've got some more um, pulverizers down here that are taking in the barrels, crushing them down into into steel, and that's going into another station. So at some point, we're going to need to take the steel away and deal with it somehow, um, much in, the, in much the same way that we are, I've been saying with all of these resources up here. But that's a thing for the future. We'll we'll do that as and when is uh, when when we're ready. The next step. I'd got all of this together, and I thought, well, you know, we're dealing with uh, memory cards here somewhere. So we're, we're dealing with formatting them and, and checking them all over and that sort of thing here, because it's some of the stuff that gets dumped down the scrap belt. So let's collect them. We're collecting them up in this station here. So let's also have the main feed of, belt of memory cards that we're producing going in here as well. So down here... I've got this system um, that's bringing in, will, will eventually be bringing in the rough data substrates and then converting them into, uh, crush, and, then, and then cleaning them up, getting them ready to be used. Now, the, uh, this means we need to bring a lot of them up from Norbit. So if we look up here, that's why we've got these extra two orders in here, the minus 50,000 rough data substrates and the 50, 000, minus 50,000 advanced circuits. So eventually that, that should be enough to keep a rocket reasonably full and busy, and those are actually being brought up by rocket. So going back down to Norvis again, over here, this is this this is where we're making the rough data substrates. So we've got the uh, the uh, raw rare metals, the silica, silicon, uh, the glass and the iron all being brought in here in order to make them. And I didn't want to have to bring all these extra ingredients up to up to uh, Norbit in order to process it. Partly for the uh, logistics cost of it, because if we if we have a look at one of these machines, you'll see that it costs uh, two glass, two silicon, two iron plates, two rare metals to make two data storage substrates. So by con con condensing it down into the data storage substrates, we're quadrupling the amount of stuff we can get through. Now, they possibly don't stack as high as some of the other ingredients, but even so, I think it's still going to be it's uh, quite a bit better. We're also leaving some scrap behind on Norvis. That doesn't really matter. We could take that up to space and deal with it up there. Um, that's okay. But the main reason is because I've got all these machines chock full of, um, of productivity modules. So as you can see, we're getting a, a productivity boost of 24% there. So that's putting a nice dent in the amount of resources that are required for making all of these ingre all, all of these data substrates. So this, as, as, as I've said many times before, it's always better, if you can, to do all of your processing on Norvis or on a planet where you can put in the productivity modules and get those boosts. So those are flowing down the belt over here, going into this rocket, as, as are a load of um, red circuits as well, until we've got 50,000 of each in there. And it seems to have got to the point where it thinks it's full, even though it's not, well, where it thinks it's got put all of the stuff in there, even though it's not actually full, which is weird because I was pretty sure that 50,000 rough data substrates would be a completely full rocket and 50,000 advanced circuits would be another half rocket. So there should be one and a half rockets worth of stuff trying to go in here, um, which is a little bit weird. Um, what's going on here? Oh, I see what's going on here. Right, yes. It's also because we've got the green cable going from the rocket onto the input there, because I wanted to send over the rocket signal, we're also getting the contents of the rocket being put onto here and subtracted from that. And subtracted, so it's subtracting the contents of the rocket from the request list. And therefore, we're only getting half of what we want. Right, that makes sense. I, underst I understand what's going on now. I don't like it, but I understand what's going on. <laughs> so what I need to do here is... I don't want this to pass through the signal until the rocket has been made, so I possibly need an additional um, 
uh, decided combinator here that will only pass through the rocket signal, and will and therefore will and so we can we can turn that on without passing all of the signal across there. Okay, I know what the problem is now, so I'm happy. I can fix that. <laughs> so the theory is that eventually this will fill up with um, data storage cards, uh, sorry, data, rough data substrates and red um, red circuits. Those will be brought up to Norvis orbit dropped off into this landing pad here and then quickly shuttled off into these two warehouses up here because they're, they're going to be, there's going to be so much of those that I don't want them to fill up this warehouse. There simply isn't room in here for them. So the idea is they'll be passed across into here and then quickly shuttle off into these, dumped onto the belt down here and they'll come, flow down here and then the sort of rough data storage substrates will come in here and they'll be cleaned off with the um, with the, with the uh, chemical water. Chemical cosmic water. Now there are two ways to do the substrate cleaning recipes. Uh, so if we have a look at make, ways of making um, polished data substrates, you can either do this recipe, well actually let's, let's look at the other way around. You can do the simple recipe where you take in chemical gel and data substrate and you get out a polished data storage substrate on the outside. That's the easy recipe because there's no side products to deal with. However, the cosmic water recipe is cheaper, partly because cosmic water is simply straight up cheaper than chemical gel anyway. Um, if we look at how you make chemical gel, you'll see that it takes 10 cosmic water, uh, sorry, no, it takes half a cosmic water and uh, five petroleum gas to make a chemical gel. But mostly because this recipe also returns the cosmic water as more cosmic, as contaminated cosmic water that can be cleaned back into 99% of it will become back as cosmic water. So just, it can just go round and round the loop. So it's much better to use this recipe because you get your cosmic water back and can reuse it. And you get a very small chance of some scrap that you can then turn into other useful stuff later on. I have also noticed that I've messed up down here. I haven't put in the disposal belt to get rid of the scrap. So I need to do that, uh, put it on and, and get rid of the scrap there. And then down down here. This is supposed to be making the actual uh, memory cards. I don't know why that hasn't been programmed. Make the blank data cards. So we're making those out of um, advanced circuits, copper plates and polished data substrates that are coming out of here. Ah, I put in the disposal for the scrap here rather than here. I got it I got it on the wrong stage. That's where that's where I went wrong. Okay, that's gonna be that's gonna be easy enough to fix. I can I can sort that out, no problem there. Um, and, and yeah, get those being passed off up that way. And so then what I've got is the memory cards being passed over into this station. And I think that's potentially that's either a well, there are a couple of possibilities here. Either I get rid of this station up here and go actually leave the memory cards on the disposal belt. They can come all the way down here until they're eventually passed off into the station down here. And I think that's what I'm going to do. That's what this belt is for. Um, the other alternative, alternative would be to, to fa feed all of the memory cards back up the disposal belt up here until they get passed sort of back into, this, into the general system around here and get, put, and get put into this station. But I think the other way of doing it is probably nicer. So I'll get rid of this, this bit, this station in the next, um, in the next stream and, we'll, and, and get that sorted out so that it works nicely and just keeps this system up and, and keeps all of the, um, keeps all the, mem all the nice memory cards down here. Where, the, where they're needed. And I can also put in some sort of prioritization system here to make sure that the, uh, the ones coming down here have priority over the ones coming in from here. So that should all be fairly straightforward, I think. And it's mostly there set up and mostly working, but there's a, a few little bugs here and there that I, that I will need to sort out, like getting rid of this scrap. So the final, yeah, the final part of this pretty much was this was this scrap disposal belt that comes up from here. So the idea is, as I say, you can get rid of almost anything that you don't want by just shoving it onto the onto the disposal belt. This this goes back up here, links in way up here, and just, it'll it'll just drop all that scrap back in up here where it can be processed. So the point of this, as I say, is you can get rid of anything you don't want, whether that's used used memory cards, clean memory cards that you just want to get rid of because you're the science area and they need to be recycled somewhere else. You can get rid of scrap, you can get rid of contaminated scrap, you can get rid of barrels of contaminated sludge, you can get rid of barrels of contaminated bio, uh, of cosmic water, all of that sort of stuff. You can just dump it straight onto this one disposal belt. Even barrels you can get rid of, all of those sort of things can be just disposed of by chucking them all on this belt. We may end up with more and more things down here later on, just as we think, yes, actually, this is another thing that I'd like to be able to get rid of. And you can just, just have it. I, I really like the idea of just having one disposal belt that you just throw everything you don't care for on, and it will just deal with it down the other end of the end, end of the uh, end of the uh, end of the uh, factory. I think that's a really nice system. One of the other things I've done here, you might notice that up here I've got the bus running down in this sort of area, and over here I've now broken most of it out to run down on this side. This is because I basically, I, I, ran, I, I didn't plan properly because I'm a Muppet, I ran out of space on this side, so I've moved over here where there's a bit more room. And that does mean that when we, if, if we expand out the chemical, the cosmic water or the chemical gel or the thermofluid production, we're going to have to have a jump across the belt, the bus in the middle of it here. That's not a problem though, we can, we can, we can manage that I think easily enough, but it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a monument to my inability to plan ahead properly. 
Once I'd finished up all this stuff, I then moved over to the other side of the base. So if we zoom out a bit, you can see that we've got the, uh, the all this recycling disposal area here. We're going to have energy science in here, and we're doing astro science over here. So this is a fairly going to be a fairly familiar setup. We've got again, we've got a station that's going to eventually drop stuff off here once we have space elevators up and running. But in the meantime, we've got a delivery cannon in here that's going that's bringing in all of the resources we need. A delivery cannon chest, sorry, that all the resources we need are being delivered to. And I think I don't know how much, how many different types of resource we're going to require here. So I've set up three warehouses to start to to have a, a bus coming out of. So as you'll remember from when I was setting up the. Um, the the the, uh, the the mall mall bus over here. I've got a system that passes things down and down and down until they get the warehouse where they're going to be fed out onto the bus at that point. So here we've got, for example, this this one is the one that does coal, plastic, sulfur, glass, and iron. They will, all those get passed down until they end up in this this warehouse, and then they'll then they'll stop there so they can be passed out on the bus. Anything else that goes down is needed then will then be passed on to the next one and the next one and so on. So I've impl implemented the same sort of system over here for the for the astro science. Uh, at the moment, we've just got uh, a few things being being brought out over here, so they're just being passed all the way along. I haven't set up any of the filters yet because we've only got a relatively small number of different resources being used here. So what we've got here is the, the four ingredients we, or five, how many ingredients we're using so far. So over here, I've set up requests for coal, glass, beryllium, and light oil barrels. So, so, and these resources. These resources are a little bit trickier because none of these are coming out of the uh, the big batteries of guns that were already set up. So I need to do a little bit of sort of cleverness with these. Now conveniently we have various planets that are already shipping out massive quantities of, of glass. So Tristan switched over, I think it was Drakit, to start firing its um, its glass over to here instead of uh, instead of Norvis, or at least here by, by preference and then to Norvis. And I did the same out on Agnea. So if we look here, yes I'm going to have to take us back to Agnea, sorry about that. <laughs> um, Yes, I prioritised uh, this gun here, I think. This, no, that's the one to Norbit. Priori this gun here is the one with the priority. Shooting to Norbit's orbit, as you can see, to that to that delivery cannon chest. Uh, whenever it's required, this one will fire. When it's not required, we've then got the other lower priority gun over here, and this one is firing off to Norvis. So, in general, we'll shoot the glass to, to Norvis orbit when it's required. If it's not required on Norvis orbit, we'll fire it to Norvis. And, in theory, we could then have more, more cannons, more prioritisation over there if we wanted. So we've got huge quantities of sand being produced here, as you've seen in the previous episodes. So there should always be a nice steady flow of sand coming out here. And I don't think we'll ever stop the demand for vulcanite. So yes, there is always going to be lots and lots of sand that we want to dispose of. So that's the, that's the glass sorted. That's, that was relatively easy. So we've got a plentiful supply of glass available. Beryllium was also fairly easy. We went to Talos. Yes, Talos. And I finally turned on one of my beryllium cannons here. So this one here is now the one that's shooting to Norvis orbit. And again, set up in, in exactly, as, exactly as you'd expect. At some point in the not-too-distant future, when this gets running, we'll probably find we're a bit short of beryllium. But as I've been saying, we can expand this out relatively easily. Once somebody can come out here and just grow this system, put in the speed modules to make it run faster, put in more co core mining drills, and probably put in some just straight-up beryllium mining systems as well. So we'll get, yeah, we can get more beryllium coming through here when we need it. The other two, the oil, the light oil and the, the coal had to come from Norvis. So light oil I did in much the same way as I did the other petroleum based products that were going up to uh, up to the other side for the for the recycling area. So over here we're receiving the signal from uh, Norbit Astro and then we're feeding that over. We've got a feed of uh, light oil coming in here and it's again a little bit pipe spaghetti but there was some light oil available here so I was able to pull that off without too much effort. Again barreling it up, putting it into the delivery cannon and shooting it up to Norbis orbit. So we've got this, that's that one and then just over here we have, this is the plastic area so we've got um, coal and, uh, and oil being brought in here. The oil is being turned into uh, Oh, the oil has been turned into yeah petroleum gas, straight then straight turned into plastic with the coal. And somebody had at some point put in some delivery cannons here for plastic. Uh, where are these going? These are going to uh, Njord and um, Talos. Okay, so so Marcus put these ones in because we needed we needed plastic out on those planets. So we've got a a delivery cannon train here, a delivery cannon capsule train here, and a couple of plastic guns. So that meant it was actually quite easy for me to drop in a uh, another pull off the uh, off the wet coal warehouse here bring the coal down to feed it into this cannon and this cannon can shoot up into Norvis orbit for the uh, for the ast astro science area so actually this was this was these two were quite easy because it took a bit of time to find places where there was coal and delivery cannon capsules in close proximity but once I'd done that it was very very easy to put that together so that meant I could then have the all of those ingredients coming across here being fed over into this warehouse I then started dumping all of the um, 
I'm emptying the oil barrels out so we've got a nice full uh, pipe of oil here. And I put in a disposal system here to turn the barrels back into steel which I then put into this warehouse. And that's actually kind of silly because I don't want to do that. Um, this should be removed like that, um, as should that. We should get rid of these onto um, a disposal system that should then run up onto this belt up here. So this should then run up here across here. I, w I won't do it now because there's um, there's a gap in the way. And yeah, but basically the barrel should be dumped onto the disposal belt here and just got rid of that way because that's going to be a much more sensible way of doing it. We don't want the barrels around here. We can just get rid of them through the disposal system. That's what it's there for. So need to get that set up and running. Um, that was a. I had this sudden light bulb moment just after the stream finished and realised that actually yes, there's a much better way to get rid of these um, these empty barrels and to, than to put them in than to crush them down into steel and put them in, put the steel in here. So we'll sort. I'll sort that out in the, in the next stream. The next thing was to turn the beryllium ingots into the form we actually want them in, which is beryllium plates. So we just have the belt coming in here. They're being chopped up into plates here and then put back out onto the belt. My first thought was to have a machine right next to the belt that just takes them off and puts them straight back in again, much like I've done here. But then I realised that actually that's not very future-proof. At some point in the future, we might find that we need more um, beryllium plates than one machine is capable of producing. So this way, I can put more machines in as required. Those are then fed down in here to make the frames. Now, the... Um, the frames are another interesting recipe because as you can see here and in the um, uh, as, you, as you can see here we have the blank frames can be made from either coal glass beryllium and light oil or from coal glass steel and light oil and so switching over to the beryllium one means you get twice as many frames out each time so instead of five you get ten and instead of one steel you use one beryllium so I think that's a to get twice as much stuff out. I think this is a really good deal. It's much better to use to, to forget the steel and use beryllium instead and get uh, and get twice as many plates out, therefore saving lots of coal, lots of glass and lots of light oil. Now that could be a way of using up the steel that's being generated from these barrels I suppose uh, but I think actually I'd rather save on all the other ingredients that are being shipped up by delivery cannon and just send the barrels off to be to be reprocessed. So that's fine I don't see any real advantage to using the, uh, using the simpler recipe, apart from the fact that it would save on beryllium which we don't have a great deal of. It's kind of funny that you get both of these recipes at the same time though because I think it's a lot of the time with with space exploration you'll get the basic recipe first and then later on you'll unlock a more advanced recipe and that's that's the case with for example I think the making making blue circuits out of uh, holmium for example which I uh, at least in 0.5 which I unlocked later on and, uh, and and then started to use once I uh, once I had plenty of holmium available. But here, it's just straight up, you get both of them at the same time. Now, my suspicion is that I think Astro is probably the science the game expects you to do first. And you get a little pile of beryllium when you find the, um, the abandoned space station up here, when you first come up into orbit. So I suspect the idea is that you're supposed to go, ooh, beryllium, that's really valuable, we don't have very much of that. And use that, and so you'll use the the basic recipe first to make your first few frames. And then once you've used it all up and you've been forced to go off and get the beryllium, you go, okay, well we'll upgrade to the decent recipe now and start using that one. But we've just we've just skipped that stage because we, it's, it, it, we didn't need it. So the next stage then down here is the telescopes. So when you're making um, astro science, as you can see, you need to take in the uh, the, the frames get turned into uh, the various different types of. Um, of exposed frames, we've got the uh, so we've got the um, this is this one is UV I think and sorry infrared then visible and then UV down here. Um, so you make those three types of exposed frames. You put them through the um, through the orrery um, astro facilities and that then gets you the, and that gets you on closer and closer to the data. <clears throat> but we'll look at that more once I've actually built it up. But so that meant I needed to make some telescopes, and that was a job for my um, mini mall area over here. This bit thing that this thing that makes all of the buildings that I'm going to need. So up here I put in telescopes which unfortunately needed the um, the mirrors and um, and in order to make the mirrors we needed uh, what do we need? There was something else I had to bring in. Oh yes, I thought I'd bring in the iridium and do the iridium recipe. So this is another one where you've got a choice of ways to do things. So making the multi-spectral mirrors, there are two recipes for it. There's the basic one which which uses low density structured glass, heat shield, steel, plate, aluminum, aluminum, steel gel, uh, chemical gel and um, that produces a mirror a mirror and some scrap or you can do this one which produces which uses um, much less glass it uses no heat shielding it uses less lube and oh more chemical gel that's interesting um, but and uh, but it also uses iridium and produces again a, a mirror and some a load of scrap so actually it produces more interestingly it produces more scrap and uses more chemical gel but it does save on glass and heat shielding I'm not 100% oh and saves on lubricant as well. I'm not 100% certain this this recipe is actually cheaper. 
still, I've wired it in to use this one for now, so I'm going to carry on with that. But that's interesting. I'm now not quite so convinced this one is so automatically better than as I thought it was. Anyway, but in order to get this up and running, I needed to bring in the Iridium from down here. Uh, so I've got now got an Iridium feed coming through here. I ripped up one of the machines in here to give me a bit more space to play with as well. That was producing um, thermofluid in the area around here. But because we're going to be removing all the science from this area, I don't think that matters. I don't think we're going to need thermofluid here. And if we end up if we end up discovering that we do need it, we'll bring it in by train from the main place that's producing it in bulk. So yes, I got that up in there. I managed to then, I then also had to put in a scrap disposal belt that came all the way down here. And that just drops straight through here and all the way down onto the main disposal system down here. Simple. Uh, then then that, that allowed, that gave me the mirrors. So that allowed me to make the, then make the telescopes, which require, these are all fairly basic things. Um, don't we seem to run out of low density structures? That's interesting. We obviously need a rocket to come up. Anyway, yes, we, we were able to make the telescopes. They didn't need anything weird apart from the multispectral mirrors. So once I got those being made up here, that was fine. I may at some point also feed these out onto another belt over here if I discover things later on that require them. And then the other, and then the other thing was the astro astrometrics facilities. Now these were again not too bad. They took take they take fairly normal things like big electric motors, red and blue circuits, low density structures, and assembly machines. And yeah, I thought that was fine. They're all that's all basic stuff. And then I went, oh. I don't actually have red uh, circuits up here yet because none of these systems required red circuits. So I had to put in another belt here which brought, brings up the red circuits and the space on the other side of it for something else. That was mildly annoying but you know it's just another another resource to bring in so not, not, a, not a serious problem at all. What is interesting is the complete lack of low density structures we seem to have here. Um, I don't know why we presumably we're just not bringing them up in in sufficient quantities i mean there's obviously going to be a massive negative number of those being shit sent down to uh down to norvis of presumably where are they minus six, only six thousand hmm. okay so norvis has presumably put six thousand of them into the rocket either that or we've run out of low density structures on norvis as well No, we have plenty of low-density structures here. We're just not feeding them into the rocket because the rocket already contains 6.2 thousand of them. So what that clearly means is that up in um, Norvis orbit, I need to increase the shopping list here to put that up to about 10,000 instead because we're getting through them at such a rate that we need to load a lot more into the rocket, bring a lot more, and just generally have a lot more of them available up here because that's not that wasn't enough. So yeah, we can do that. That's easy. So yes, that's allowed me to start making the telescopes, as you've seen, and the astrometrics facilities that I haven't actually put any of in yet, but w but will do eventually. So over here, we've got yeah, we've got made some good progress with the astro science. We've expanded out to make the uh, make get the telescopes up here and running. Now the one thing I haven't done with these telescopes is put in the uh, the coolant for them. That's why they're not running. And that's why they haven't produced any exposed plates yet. Um, that's <laughs> because I forgot we we're going to need coolant basically. So in theory, there should be a coolant drop off train at the top here that will drop off the coolant and then and, and chill it down all up here and then have some and then there'll be some pipes running down here with the rest of the bus system that carries all the coolant down i forgot to do that so um, i'm gonna have to put in a station somewhere down here and cool it in the middle which is a little bit silly but we'll sort it out we'll get it in there somehow it'll, it'll, it can be made to work it's not it's not a serious problem but i'm, I'm going to put in the astrometrics facilities and the uh, system and, and the um, and the supercomputers that are going to make the um, the memory cards no the uh, the, the uh, data catalogs first uh, and then put in the coolant at the bottom so it's going to be a little while till we get this starting up up and running but you know never mind we can work towards that i'll probably get all of that done in the next stream I'm also quite pleased with the uh, system I've got in here, with these uh, pipes winding backwards and forwards between the um, between the the uh, uh, telescopes. Because this means I can the teles normally I would put in I would have a system where you have a machine like this, and then the underground pipes would go like uh, this with a with a pipe in the middle. But the problem is the um, and then then the next one would have the same sort of thing going on. The problem is the telescopes are so small because they're three by three, there isn't room to have the underground pipes like this and then have an inserter to put in or take out whatever resources are required for that telescope. So what I've done for done here is I've got this pipe winding up and down like this and all these underground belts for the uh, for the uh, frames and then the inserters in in the gaps here. And I think this should actually work. The problem I ran into is that you can't then use the uh, the pylons because there's nowhere to put the normal size medium electric poles in, in there. So I've, I've, I've now upgraded gone, oh yeah, I should use substations. Because for some reason I seem to have a bit of a blind spot around substations. I don't use them anything like as much as I should do. Uh, they're, they're a really obvious thing to use basically 
all over the place because they've got a much bigger coverage area they're much easier to use but for some reason I have a blind spot and I mostly use pylons but with substations like this we'll be able to get the um, be able to get full coverage and be able to get the whole system up and running off the uh, uh, with, with, with the pipe winding through like this it's more complicated it doesn't really give any significant benefit over just separating them a little bit and having the and doing it like 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 I've done up here at the top but it kind of looks cool and it's slightly more complicated therefore it must be better and more fun so I've done so I've done it this way <laughs> there's no yeah there's no actual good reason for it but I think it looks good which is what so I and, and that's enough of a reason for me one of the things I noticed in previous playthroughs is that you tend to get through enormous numbers of these frames so if we look if we look at the recipes um, up here you can see that uh, when you, you take in um, a blank observation frame, it gets turned into an, into one infrared observation frame. Great. The infrared observation frame, you then need 10 of those to have an 85% chance of making an observation data. So you're going to need 10 divided by 0.85, which is going to be about 1.2, 1.3, something like that. Probably about one, yeah, about one and a third. So you're going to need about about 13 infrared infrared observation frames. So 13 of these frames in order to make one data card, and then you're going to need um, Four data, no, yeah, four data, oh, three of those to make one of those, and then so that's going to be six times 13, 78. So you're going to need 78 of these frames in order to make one Astro catalog, and that's a lot. And then we're going to they're still then going to need more of these frames later on for future science packs where the, where we, the future Astro packs will be doing the more advanced telescope types. So we're going to need absolutely phenomenal numbers of these. Which is why we've got these two extra belts along here that I intend in the long run to have more, 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 more machines coming out this way, making the frames, dumping them onto this belt, and then when this belt is full, they'll go onto this belt, and then onto this belt, and then we'll use these along here just to make sure the, the belts are kept full. We've got a good supply of them available because, my goodness, we're going to need a lot of these frames in the long run. Uh, so, yes, we've got... A good, hopefully this is going to be a, a big enough supply of them. We'll see how it goes, but, yeah, we'll... <laughs> we shall see. Right, so I think I've finally finished talking about everything I've been up to. Um, if not, then forget it. It can't be too important because I've forgotten about it. <laughs> so let's have a quick look at what else has been going on on Norvis before we end this video. Because it's got a little bit long, but it's not too bad yet. So, down on Norvis. Well, I mentioned. let's talk about Tristan first. I mentioned that he'd put in a system over here somewhere to, um, to split off the stuff being brought out for this rocket. And then had ended up having to um, remove it, or ended up removing it because I didn't use it. Sorry about that. But at least the thinking you've done there will be, probably be useful later when we're starting to send trains up the space elevator. He's put in a new uranium mine because we're apparently absolutely ripping through that. So that's probably up here where he's... Yes. Ah, yes. People have been putting in little tags on the map to say where they've done something new, which is very helpful. So there's a new mine here. We've got the uranium being pulled up here. It, it's a mine. You've seen you've seen what mines look like a million times before. This one's slightly different because it's also bringing in sulfuric acid. But, you know, you've seen that kind of thing as well. We've got a massive tank of sulfuric acid here. We've got warehouses full of uh, uranium gradually filling up. It's a mine. You know how those work. He's also boosted the iron smelting because we, were, yeah, we had a, we had a shortage of iron of all things. Um, every everywhere we were running running out of iron, so he's presumably that's we've got an iron smelt. We had iron smelting, now we have additional iron smelting. So we've got now got twice as many iron ingots coming out, and that seems to have caught up now. We've got to the point where all the buffers seem, the buffers here are all full. We've got full full of iron plates as well. So yeah, well done. That has solved the iron problem. <laughs> you'd, you'd hope, actually. I mean, if you've got, if you've got almost enough iron, because we clearly did, because it was basically okay until it wasn't quite, you'd think that then going in and doubling it would mean you'd then have plenty of it available. So that's good. And he's added added more power in as well. That's probably, yes, up here. He's putting some new pumps here to get more water out, more um, more power systems, just generally a bit more of this. And this is where all of our lag is coming from and why um, my system up here, as you can see, is only running at 47 UPS. Which is actually significantly better than it runs out during a stream. Hmm. We'll have to get somebody else to, um, <laughs> to, to 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 run the server, I guess. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot. All, all of this, all this area is is uh, growing wood, turning it into into biomethanol, and then burning it to produce electricity, which is lovely. It produces all of our, our electricity, but it also puts massive strain on the computer. So at some point, we'd like to replace this with something a bit better. But you know, for now, it's it's working. He's also had a bit of a think about putting energy science up into Norbit, but not done very much on that because he's been busy with other things, basically. So next up is Mark, who says he's put in some artillery cannons in on Norvis, so like this one over here. These are being fed by bot, but never mind, I think that's forgivable. Um, <laughs> 
it's waiting for some waiting for some uh, nuclear artillery to come out. So we've had a lot of um, a lot of nuking been going on out here, as you can see. So if basically every time the biters expand, uh, there'll be some, some there'll be sudden unexpected spontaneous nuclear explosions that will uh, help to uh, to push them back a little bit, should we say? Uh, this works quite well, although it is a bit disconcerting when you're messing around on the planet and suddenly you get um, flashes of nuclear explosions somewhere on the uh, somewhere somewhere distant, uh, to, covering the screen, which is a yeah a little disconcerting, as I say. Especially as I think it happened because we did a, re a research fairly recently that got us at some extra range on the artillery. Uh, probably this, yeah artillery shell range this probably this one here um got us a little bit of extra extra range so suddenly all the artillery woke up and went oh yes we should start shooting things shouldn't we so he's been going around putting in some of some of these artillery pieces around the edges just to keep the just to keep the fighters at bay and keep things reasonably quiet um Oh, and uh, Mark also was also loosely involved with the uh, with the expansion of the iron over here, in that he put down some he put down the um, the landfill in order to allow Tristan to put to, to build up around here. And I think that's going to be enough for this video because I've been talking for quite a long time already, and I don't want these videos to get too long. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Come back tomorrow to find out what's been going on on to find out what's been going on out on all the other planets because there's there's been lots and lots of progress as as always and I need to make sure I talk about what everyone's been doing. I do go over my stuff first because of my ego, but I um I do like to talk about what they've been doing as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that'll be coming out tomorrow, and then on Monday we shall be uh, streaming again. So we should be—I I shall be fixing all of the things I've been talking about, and everyone else will be carrying on with uh, with their relevant projects. And on Wednesday I shall be playing some more XCOM on stream. That's a lot of fun. Please come along and watch that because it's—it's—it's it's, it's been. It, it's, we're having a lot of fun there. We're blowing, uh, fighting against the alien menace, and uh, getting lots of my friends killed because that's how XCOM goes generally. <laughs> so yes, come along to that. And Tuesdays and Thursdays we'll have miscellaneous other videos as and when they're available. Uh, please also check out the channel sponsor, that's trefoil.be. If, if you use the code LAWRENCEPLAYS on checkout, you can get 20% off your first month, and they will host a, a Minecraft or a Factorio or various other game servers for you at a very reasonable price. Uh, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel, because that makes a big difference in how well the, the channel can grow, how well things go, how, how much YouTube advertises my videos to other people who might be interested in them, that sort of thing. So I'd very much appreciate a subscription in there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.